Uh, today I'm going to look at producing a black and white image uh, from a colour file uh, in Photoshop. Uh, now while there's quite a lot of ways uh, using Photoshop itself to, to produce a black and white image by playing with the saturation and contrast etc. Um, I'm going to show you the way that I uh, do it using uh, a, a Nick Silver FX plugin. Now Nick plugins um, were bought by Google a couple of years ago and uh, were marketed by Google and I think I probably paid about seventy-five pounds for uh, for the license for this. Um, but the good news is uh, that Google have recently made made them free, so you can download them from uh, the Google website. And I'll put a link um, below uh, to the downloads uh, for those of you who don't who don't have the the plugins. Um, so if I go ahead and open up um, a, a colour file, I got one here for some uh, scooters I took that were at a scooter rally uh, in Chester. Um, at the end of the summer here. I've, I've done all the correction that I wanted to do do in uh, in Camera Raw uh, and produce this file. So if I, um, first thing I'm going to do is to put in a new layer uh, and therefore everything we do with the filter will be on the on the new layer. So I'm going to call this this layer Silver FX. Uh, then I'm going to go to Filter, go to the Nick Collection and open up Silver FX. Right, this will open up the uh, the black and white effects plugin. Right, when you open this up you're presented with a uh, a number of, of um, presets uh, down the, uh, the left hand side of the screen uh, and there's, there's all sorts of here, different types of black and white conversions here for, um, including some nice uh, old-fashioned you know, sepias, yellow and antique look ones. Um, but for what I want to do today, I'm going to go for a start off with a high structured preset. Now this gives us quite a nice um, dramatic image. Uh, now down the right hand side of the screen there's a, a number of different adjusters. You've got brightness, contrast, structure. Uh, you can put selective uh, uh, control points in there for doing uh, adjustments to certain parts of the image, but you got colour filters. Now, for for those of you who are, who are um, old enough to remember black and white film photography, uh, we used to put uh, colour filters over our lens to get uh, different effects uh, on the black and white film. Um, first of all, we'll look at structure. Now, the structure on this is set at 33% at the moment. I'm going to increase it slightly because I like to have a lot of structure and texture in the in the picture itself. Because black and white, at the end of the day. Is down to different differences in brightness and in texture, so let's increase that a bit. Uh, if you look at the colour filters now, I'm just going to. Um, at the moment, we've got no filter on at all, so I'll just look at the effect of the different filters. So we'll start with the red filter, and that's you know straight away that's dark under the sky and, and, and given more drama to the picture. If I swap that for an orange filter, not a huge amount of difference. Swap it for a yellow filter, again, not a huge amount of difference. Swap it for a green filter. Uh, now that has has made quite a bit of difference to you. The contrast is in different areas of of the picture now. Uh, probably the most dramatic one of these is the uh, is the blue filter, uh, you know, which which makes the sky much lighter. Not a great effect from my point of view. Uh, now, I'm a great fan of the red filter, and when I used to do black and white film photography, I would regularly use a uh, a red filter over my uh, my lens. If we then come down to film types, uh, yeah, in the old days we had different types of uh, black and white film. Um, we had the, the low uh, ISO films, which always gave, gave very crisp uh, images. Um, Kodak, Ilford Pan 50 was a good one, the Agfa was a good one. Uh, the more modern films then uh, were things like the, the Deltas uh, and the Kodak Max. Um, these are actually perhaps based on colour film technology, but uh, uh, in black and white. Uh, slightly higher, ad, uh, you know, this was the the, uh, the Ilford FP4 was kind of a, a general uh, purpose medium speed film, and then we had the high speed films. The HP5 used to be a good one, but you get grain with HP5, but it was you know that was part of the art really. You see, there's a bit of grain in the sky here when I've used it. But my favourite one really is probably the the Kodak uh, or the or the Ilford Pan, the low ISO ones. You can see you've got less grain and a bit more drama in the picture. Uh, and out of those two, 
I'm probably going to favour the ill figures because it makes the sky slightly darker. So I'll click that. Uh, you, you can actually alter the amount of grain you might get in the picture as well. So if I, if I bring that down, you can see it's bringing more grain. Depends if you want that kind of old-fashioned effect. I like the grain to reduce, so I'm going to go right down on those. Right, I'm going to press OK. And that's going to bring up a nice black and white picture. There we go. It's just saving the image now. I got quite a nice dramatic black and white shot of these two scooters, as you might have seen in a newspaper in the 1960s. How about that? I brought up a new picture now, um, and we'll look at a slightly different type of uh, end result with a black and white conversion. Again, I'm going to be using uh, Nick FX. So I will start off by putting in a duplicate layer, and we're going to call it again Silver FX. That gives us a layer to work on. That won't affect the original file. So filter Nick collection. Silver FX again. Right, let it load up. So we'll take a second or two. Right, again, you can see that we've got uh, a range of uh, different uh, presets down the, the left hand side, but I'm going to go for an old fashioned one this time, so we'll go for Antique Plate 2. Uh, so, we'll start off. Uh, with this uh, with this preset now this gives us a faded sepia old-fashioned type of look uh, it's supposed a little bit bright for my liking so i'm going to reduce the the brightness down a bit uh, and increase the contrast actually not too much i'll put that back to zero uh we'll have a play with the structure and see what that does actually yeah increasing the structure right to maximum makes it looks a little bit a little bit crisper uh, again, we'll have a look at the um, at the various filters. Now, it makes a, the red so no filter. The red filter makes a huge difference actually, because it probably had a red scarf on it originally. Orange again, yellow, green filter makes it look a lot darker. Uh, the blue filter actually is quite dramatic in that case, so I might use that one uh, this time. Now the grain is currently set at 30, oh, sorry, 379, so I might uh, just see what effect like bringing more grain into it has. I'll just make it look a little bit more old fashioned, so perhaps put the grain at about, about 150, yeah, a little bit of grain into it. And uh, do you want the grain to be soft or hard? I think probably soft. One thing that we can we can look at in this in in this uh, conversion as well is the, the the tonality protection. So we've got at the moment we've got our shadows right to the left, the slider. We put the shadows to the right. Does make a lot of difference. So let's look at highlights. That makes quite a bit of difference actually. Bring some of the background in, which which looks quite effective, I think. So Right, so I think that's probably got myself a nice old-fashioned photograph there. I'll click on OK and wait for it to process and see do we like the results. So there we go, nice old-fashioned sepia picture with a with a faded edge to it. While we've looked at uh, using the um, the, the Nick. Um, silver um, FX effects to produce um, a black and white image. Uh, th there is one other um, uh, effect within the, uh, the the Nick package uh, that has some some black and white options, and that's uh, um, quite quite useful when when you've got an image with a with a fair bit of detail in it. So I'll just just to open up this image here in uh, in Photoshop. Uh, and again, I'm going to uh, make a duplicate layer, and I'll just call this Nick. And this time, I'm going to open up Filter Nick Collection and the HDR FX Pro uh, Two. Now, this this effect is is um, 
it's mainly uh, intended for producing um, HDR or HD, pseudo HDR effects um, on, on color images, um, either from um, a range of images uh, um, taken at different exposures or from uh, um, a single image that's uh, that's then tone mapped. Uh, but with, within the uh, the um, HDR effects program, there are a couple of um, interesting black and white conversions as well. The first one is um, called black and white realistic. Uh, but the one I'm going to use today is further down, and it's called black and white artistic. And see so straight away it's turned this um, uh, image of reflections in a in a, uh, um, a pub window into uh, in turned it into quite an interesting abstract uh, image. Right, there are some some more adjustments that I can make to um, to this uh, as well. Now, if I'm looking down the the right hand side. Uh, you've got a number of uh, sliders again. You've got turn compression, uh, method strength, and I'll leave those for the time being. But you've actually got a number of different presets within the uh, within the um, HDR method. So uh, first of all, the depth goes from off to subtle to normal to strong. Now I'm probably going to leave that on subtle. Detail goes from soft to realistic, to accentuated, to highly detailed, and to grungy. Uh, I actually quite like that grungy look. Uh, again you've got drama which goes from grainy, to sharp, to dingy, to deep, to natural, and to flat. Uh, I'm going to go back to Back to sharp, I think, on that. Uh, you can then uh, adjust the exposure below. You can adjust the shadow and highlights detail again. And then I'm going to go play with this until I like, find, and that's for too much, find a, a good balance. Contrast, I think I'm going to leave this time being. The structure is currently set at 19%. Uh, if you increase that, it's going to make the thing look more detailed and structured. So I'm going to bring that right up actually to 100%. Now that's produced quite a, quite again, quite a, a striking abstract image uh, from that original colour file. So I'm going to click OK uh, and that will process uh, and it will open itself up in Photoshop. As you can see it's a, it's a pretty similar process to the, to the last conversion. It just produces a slightly more dramatic um, image for if you were looking for that kind of arty look. Okay, that's just about it for now. Um, I'm going to finish off by just posting some um, of the black and white images that I've done uh, using the the uh, the Nick effects uh, package, uh, and uh, I hope that you'll uh, you'll tune in to my uh, to my next video. Thank you.